couple minutes before 12 noon Central Time. Welcome everybody to our Crown Council webinar uh, this afternoon, how to break through the clutter, get people to pay attention, and get tons of new patients. <clears throat> this is Steve Anderson, and welcome everybody. I, you're muted, and uh, but we can see you as you uh, call in, so it's good to see lots of familiar names on the list. I've got a couple of uh, kind of preliminaries here before we get started. Uh, first off, uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we have sent out uh, a lot of information about the Crown Council annual event, February 3rd through the 5th <clears throat> next year in Scottsdale, Arizona. That is rapidly approaching. And uh, one thing I just wanted to make a special note of is on Thursday, February 3rd, which is the day preceding the official start of the annual event, uh, I will be hosting a special session for all the Crown Council teams on how to increase your production with a zero budget, and uh, which will be kind of an interesting tag on to today's topic. So I uh, highly encourage you to come. If you've never been to an annual event, uh, you need to come. It is a uh, highlight of the year and a regular for many, many Crown Council members for many years. Uh, as well, uh, we would encourage you to log on to crowncouncil.tv. That's become a, a regular site for many Crown Council members. There are a lot of different features on crowncouncil.tv, <clears throat> including a new team meeting that's posted every two weeks, as well as the Office of the Month feature. Uh, so I encourage you to, to go back there often and have some great things that are posted on a regular basis. During the webinar today, as I mentioned, you'll be muted, uh, so you'll be able to hear us, but we won't be able to hear you. Uh, questions can be submitted on your screen, uh, on the little control panel. Uh, on your screen, there's an area where you can enter your questions. We'd encourage you to do that at any point along in the presentation. Uh, at near the end of the presentation, we will uh, field those questions, and we'll take them on a first-come, first-serve uh, basis. So feel free to enter those questions at any time. Uh, this webinar will also be recorded, <laughs> and we will be posting it. Excuse me. We'll be posting that for uh, repeat listening, as well as uh, if anybody was not able to attend. Uh, that will be that will go across the email network when it's posted. Uh, sometimes it takes as long as 24 hours, but we try and get it up as, as sooner. And that will again be posted on CrownCouncil.tv, but the notes will go out on the email network. Uh, new to our webinar today, if you've joined us before, we're going to be doing some polls to give you an opportunity to weigh in on some of the topics that we'll talk about. So several times throughout the presentation, you'll be asked to respond to a survey or a poll. And we'll let you know when those uh, come up, and you can respond right there on your screen. So with that, uh, we're straight up on the hour. Let me give you a little background about our topic today. Uh, as most of you know, uh, we test just about everything that we talk about at the Total Patient Service Institute and the Crown Council. And our most trusted testing ground are the offices that we own and that we manage. That gives us hands-on experience on a daily basis about what's really going on and uh, make sure that we test everything on our own dollar. Today's topic is no exception. In 1994, Rich Harshaw founded Monopolize Your Marketplace. And since that time, he's worked with thousands of companies in every imaginable industry. He's also the author of the book by the same title, Monopolize Your Marketplace. About two years ago, I gave Rich the challenge of taking our practice marketing to another level. Now, I'm probably like a lot of you, since just about every single piece of dental marketing I've seen uh, features happy, smiling teeth with uh, beautiful smiles, I figured that Rich would probably come up with something similar to that. The first campaigns that he created featured things other than happy, smiling faces. Uh, but they all had one thing in common. They all put a smile on my face. They were eye-catching, very clever, and very compelling. Uh, when he explained why he does the things the way he does them and what kind of response he expected, it made a lot of sense to me. So we pulled the trigger for a test, and it worked. We did another test, and that one worked, and then another. So long story short, uh, we've been using Rich's campaigns in our external marketing uh, and marketing programs in our practices for over two years. 
uh, that's just a preface to let you know that once again we're not presenting anything here that we've not done ourselves and tested on our own dollar. So what you're about to see is probably a little bit different than what you've seen before, maybe a lot different, but we hope you'll keep an open mind. Rich and I have something in common in our uh, teaching technique, and it's one of the things I really appreciate about him, is the, he explains the why behind what he does. I call them natural laws, uh, and Rich is going to explain the basis and the foundation for how he creates what he creates and what the psychological foundation of it is. So with that, you're in for great educational experience as well as a, a fun experience today as you explore some things that we hope you'll find are new, unique, and different, and that works. So with that, let me turn the time over to the founder and author of Monopolize Your Marketplace, Rich Harshaw. All right. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate you having me on today. And uh, you're right. It's been quite a long trip. Uh, I tell you what, this guy Steve, he's got he's got quite a uh, need to have things proven and tested out. We've been talking about doing some webinars and things like this for a while, and uh, Steve says, "Yeah, we're we're going to do that just as soon as I feel comfortable that this stuff actually works." So, <laughs> a couple years later, here we are. The title of the uh, the uh, webinar today, "Monopolize Your Marketplace." It, it is the company name. It's the the name of my book and so forth and. And, and the reality is it's kind of a cute title, Monopolize Your Marketplace, but I think you'll see as we go through this, it really is more than a cute title. It, it really is something that in a very serious way I think can be achieved or at least nearly achieved to really truly monopolize and get all of the business. And the reality is in my business and in, in my client's business, I, I take an attitude of I feel personally offended if somebody doesn't use my services because I've taken so much effort and in, in, I'm in I'm imposing the same attitude, hopefully, on you. You've put so much effort and time and energy into your business and making it good and, and de delivering the optimal patient uh, experience that if somebody doesn't come to you, I mean, that it, it, it just feels wrong. And so what we want to do is literally find ways to get more and more of the customers to come to you, patients in your case, bust through the clutter, stand out, winning with superior marketing. I know that marketing is a topic that's, uh, that is talked about a lot in uh, dentistry, there's a bazillion and one different guys out there saying, hey, I've got this marketing program. And, uh, you know, I've looked at a lot of them. I don't want to say all of them. And th the reality is there's just a lot of stuff out there that, in my opinion and probably in your experience, just isn't going to work that well, doesn't work very well. Uh, you, you just you just can't throw a smiling face on a, on a postcard and expect that people are going to come flying in. So like Steve said, we are going to go through a lot of the whys and the psychology and principles behind why this stuff works. And, and I'm going to go through this with you in quite a bit of detail. I don't know if you remember the old movie from the 70s, Smokey and the Bandit, but uh, there's a line in there that says, we've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. So I do admit right up front you'll find I talk fast, and sometimes that's a problem. But like Steve said, this webinar is being recorded. I'm also going to give you some resources that you can get from us to learn more about this, some audio CDs, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to uh, – absorb all of this. If you can't get it all quite right now, take as many notes as you can, but you'll have an opportunity on the back end. We're going to talk about, uh, first of all, why using stock photo models with beautiful smiles are killing your marketing. It's, it's counterintuitive, but it's true. I'm going to introduce you to the marketing equation. This is what I call a surefire formula that lets you bust through the clutter. And this is really a major issue in dentistry. There's so many dentists that they, they, they all the ads just start looking the same. We've got to find a way to bust through how to create mailers that are going to leap out of the mailbox, magazine ads, newspaper ads, whatever marketing avenue that you want to use. And I know a lot of dentists use mailers and newspapers and certain magazines and so forth, so we're going to talk about how to really make those work. I'm going to tell you why most marketing budgets are missing the mark with 95% of your t potential customers, literally 95%. It's just not happening because we're saying the wrong things to the prospects. I'm going to show you how to say the right things and then how to make sure you're positioned to receive the phone call when somebody does decide they're ready to see a dentist. This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, just make a note of this. There's a website set up called 5mistakescd.com. We've, we've put together an audio CD program. It's called The Five Biggest Marketing Mistakes Businesses Are Making and How to Overcome Them All. Uh, it covers, uh, there's five mistakes on there that covers uh, today we're going to cover two out of the five things that you'll learn on this CD, but if you want review of what we're going to talk about today, you'll find it on there, plus 
a few other things that we're not going to have time to cover today. So make a note, go to that website. Uh, you can get a download and we'll send you a CD. There's no credit card required. You don't pay shipping, anything like that. We'll just send it over to you. So make a note. Uh, that is a good way for you to absorb and retain more of what we're going to talk about today. So let's get started with something that's very, very foundational and fundamental. Uh, you're going to look at what's on this next slide and you're probably going to say, really, I came to a webinar for somebody to tell me this because it's so, uh, it's so, it's so uh, fundamental. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to lay this stuff out here. But before we do that, we're going to go to Greg, who's going to give us a poll. Yeah, that's right. We thought we'd try this. See if everybody wants to uh, answer this real quickly. We'll leave it up for about 30 seconds. You can answer it, and then we'll close it down and give you some response. Yeah. So it's a pretty simple question. How well is your marketing for new patients working right now? I'd be interested to know, just as a, uh, a general idea, how how's that going for you? Wow, this is great. 75% have already voted. You guys are awesome. Okay, let's see the results. What, is the, what are we, what we going to find out here? So, 3% are fantastic, 41% pretty good, 33% so-so, and 22% are really glad they're on this call. <laughs> the, the other 78%, they're like, what am I doing here? I'm just kidding. So, that's good. We've got some work to do. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty typical. Very few feel like they've just got it dialed in and stuck on automatic. So uh, let's give you some ideas here. Let's go to some real fundamental stuff. Three things. I'm just going to throw these up on the screen here. Uh, three steps to powerful marketing. It, it doesn't get any more fundamental than this. Number one, have something good to say. Number two, say it well. Number three, say it often. This is really, if you break it all down to the atoms of marketing, here it is. Have something good to say. And that has a lot to do with innovation and making your practice one that people really want to come to. This is a really, really critical part of success in marketing. We don't have time to talk about it today. That's why it's not shown in red, it's shown in black. We are going to talk about number two and three, though. Saying it well, getting past what I call platitudes, communicating powerfully, writing marketing in a way that makes people take action, and then saying it often, breaking through the clutter, helping John Smith, that's your prospect. In many cases, it's Jane Smith, helping them realize that she wants and needs what you sell, dentistry, pounding Jane Smith in a nice way and positioning yourself for practice, your practice for the sale when he does buy. These are critical topics. We're going to go through them in a lot of detail. Let's start with a little story. Pizza Hut and Papa John's, you're probably familiar with both companies. Pizza Hut is right here local in the Dallas area where Steve and I live. And this was big news about 10 years ago. Pizza Hut sued Papa John's. And the reason was because Papa John's was taking too much market share. So the American way is you sue people that are taking your market share. Well, that being said, they went to the to court and they said, here's the problem that we have with Papa John's. Their advertising is false and misleading. It says better ingredients and better pizza, when in truth it's not, it's not a fact. Because Pizza Hut indeed has better ingredients and better pizza. So this was a big, huge lawsuit. And it went through several iterations of trial and, and judgments and jury trials. And it finally was decided that uh, Papa John's won this lawsuit because the judge, and this was in circuit federal court, it was one step away from Supreme Court. And actually, the Supreme Court declined to hear this because it was appealed to the Supreme Court. If, believe it or not, pizza, for crying out loud. But here's what, here's what the judge said at the circuit court level, federal court. The judge said, Pizza Hut has no leg to stand on. Papa John's can use the, the uh, slogan, better ingredients, better pizza. And here's why. Because it's what the judge called puffery. It's advertising puffery. And he said, nobody believes it. Nobody takes it at face value. Nobody actually thinks that it's true. So who cares? It doesn't matter. They can use it. They can say it. Which really, if you think about it, is kind of funny. He said that you can use this. And the, the basis for it is because nobody even believes it anyway. And here's what we see. In marketing and advertising, we tend to say things like Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza, that we know full well people don't really believe. They don't give it any credibility. They don't think you're lying, but at the same time, they don't think you're telling the truth. Here's why. Because we're so used to seeing claims like better ingredients, better pizza, that people just naturally discount. And it's kind of like, here's, a, here's an interesting way to say it. If you remember back... Uh, when you're a kid watching Charlie Brown cartoons on TV, they had the Christmas special, the, the pumpkin one, and all of those. Remember when Charlie Brown was talking to a teacher or his mother, and the mother or the teacher would talk back to the children? Remember the sound they would make? 
wah, 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 wah. Remember that sound? I know everybody remembers it because I do this in a seminar. The whole crowd just erupts and they make that sound. It's funny and annoying at the same time. But here's the deal. That's what it sounds like when we look at, read, see, listen to marketing from most companies. It sounds like Charlie Brown's mom talking. It's just a bunch of platitudes and puffery. Here's what we find. Platitudes are ruling most marketing. Here's what a platitude is. It's a quick definition. Words or phrases that are drearily commonplace, predictable, lack power to evoke interest through overuse and repetition that are nevertheless stated as though they were original and significant, like better ingredients, better pizza. Nobody believes that. Commonplace, predictable, overused, rep, rep, what's the word, repetitious, nevertheless stated as though they're original and significant. You say, well, I don't know if that's true in my business, in my practice, and the truth is it probably is. We say things like best service, highest quality, you know, largest selection, free, est free estimates. Here's my favorite one. In business since 1431 BC. Really? Okay, good. <laughs> Let's take a look at some ads. These are representative of what you would see out there. Perhaps representative of what you're sending out there, whether it be in the vow pack or in mailboxes, postcards, letters. Maybe it's a magazine, newspaper, who knows? Maybe you see stuff like this. Safe, gentle dental care for the whole family. It's time for your spring cleaning, and look how happy we are, and the dentist is happy, and everyone's got such a great smile, and it's obviously a result of the wonderful dental work that's being done, because nobody would ever guess that there's a stock photo with a happy family with a little kid that all looks like they got great teeth. I mean, come on. We understand this. People look at this kind of stuff, and there's a small minority of people that look at this and say, golly, you know what? I really do need to go to the dentist. Dad gummit, I need to go. Yeah, here's the dentist. I might as well call him. And then there's the huger population that looks at this, and it never even penetrates their consciousness. I'll show you why in just a second. It just doesn't even make it. They don't even actually physically, with their brain, they, with their eyes they see it, but with their brain, it's gone. All they hear is Charlie Brown's mother talking. Healthy teeth and gums for life. Hey, look, we've got old people that we do business with. And, hey, we've got to always throw in the hot chick because she's got the great smile. Say farewell to your dental fears. And if you go stand in a field of wheat, then you will not have fears of dental either. I don't understand what the wheat field has to do with anything, but nevertheless, there it is. Hey, look, there's more wheat on this one. Complete dental care with a gentle touch. We've got flowers and wheat, and we've got chicks, and we've got kids. And what a great smile. I think that might be Justin Bieber. I'm not sure. Helping, your, helping you enjoy a lifetime of smiles. And I want you to know that the word platitude is fully in force with words and pictures in all of these ads. Now, I'm not saying that these are your ads. All I'm saying is that these are probably pretty much exactly like a lot of your ads. So let's talk about how to say it well. How to get John Smith, again, that's just a placeholder for your target customer, your target prospect, your target patient. How to say it so that John Smith will pay attention to your ads and then take action. Well, we're going to introduce to you what's called the marketing equation. There's four components, and uh, I'll throw them up here on the, on the screen. We'll go through these in detail here in just a minute. Number one, interrupt, getting qualified prospects to pay attention. I'm going to build a pretty strong case for you here that says throwing the happy, smiling, nice teeth people is not a very good way to get people to pay attention. You say, well, that's what we do. Okay, well, here's the shortest course I could ever give you on marketing. It goes like this. Find out what's important and relevant to your prospect and then talk about that in your marketing. And you say, well, that's obvious. We do that. And here's what I'm telling you. Happy, smiling pe people is not what's important and relevant to most of your prospects. We'll get into this in more detail in just a second, but just trust me for a minute. Number two is engage, getting those who do pay attention to remain interested. These are emotional level things, interrupting engage, getting people to, be, uh, to take a look. And then number three and four, we've got to be a little bit more on the logical side, give people information so they can feel like they can make a good decision and then get them to take action through a proper offer. So we'll go through this right now in a little bit of detail. And here's what you need to understand about marketing. It's all about the brain. The brain is in charge, and more specifically, the subconscious part of the brain. And it's where all the decisions are being made. And here's what we've got to do. We've got to find a way to go past the eyes, to go past the ears, and go directly to the brain and make a connection there. You say, my gosh, I didn't get on a webinar looking to get a psychology class. I said, well, just stick with me. I'm going to give you some terms right now that you're going to look at and say, that's kind of weird and strange, but if you'll stick with me for just a few more minutes, I promise you, I've taught this stuff a ton, it'll make perfect sense to you very shortly. So here's what we've got to understand, three concepts. One is called alpha mode, the next one is called beta mode, 
and the third one is called reticular activating system. If you can understand these concepts, you will be well on your way to massively improving your marketing. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So first of all, understanding interrupt, and we're going to talk about alpha mode. Alpha mode is a brain state. It is a subconscious running of patterns in your life that allows you to function without engaging your brain. Now think about that for a minute. That sounds pretty cool. If you could do stuff without engaging your brain, how great would that be? Well, here's the thing you need to understand. You do this all the time. You do it every single day. Have you ever driven to work before and you showed up at work and you realized after you got there that the entire way from your home to your uh, dental practice on the way to work you didn't, real, you didn't recognize or notice anything. You were in your own little world. You were either talking on the phone or listening to music or thinking about something, problem maybe, weighing on your mind, and you show up and you realize, man, I was not paying any attention while I was driving, which is pretty funny until you realize that everybody else is doing the same thing. It's, it's a downright dangerous, but nevertheless, we do it. It's called alpha mode. You can drive to your office without thinking about it because you've done it 7,000 times. It's not that hard. You're not consciously aware of what you're doing or what you're thinking. And from a marketing perspective, this is critical because when somebody goes to their mailbox or somebody goes to their magazine or their newspaper, their radio, their television, whatever the case may be, when they're flipping, let's just use mail as an example, as they're flipping through their mail, they are literally in alpha mode. They're looking for things. They're looking for checks, number one. Those never come. They're looking for birthday cards from their grandmother, number two. Those never come. And number three, they're looking for bills because they know they got to deal with them. And then everything else just kind of goes into this hazy pile of, what is that? Let me hurry up and get rid of it. And they don't even really, literally, pay any attention. In other words, let me give it to you this way. If I came to you right now and I said, name, the, name five pieces of, quote, unquote, junk mail that you got in your mailbox yesterday, you can't even tell me because you weren't paying any attention. You might have seen it for a split second gone. What we want to do is split second not gone. How do we do that? Well, first thing is beta mode. Well, the first thing was alpha mode. second thing is beta mode. This is the opposite. It's a state of active mental engagement where the person is consciously aware of what they're doing, and it's the state of active problem solving and learning, okay? So this is kind of the opposite. This is like uh, when I was 15 years old and I went to driver's ed for the first time, and on Wednesdays at driver ed, they show the movies of all the people getting destroyed in as many ways as you can humanly imagine people getting destroyed in a car crash for two straight hours. And afterwards, my mom comes to pick me up, and I looked at her and said, I'm not getting in that car. Are you kidding me? It's a death trap. We will be toast and bacon by the time we reach halfway home. I'm not getting in it because I was so scared. And you get in, and finally, you're at full alert mode. See, and compare that to now when you drive to work with a big gulp on one hand and a hot dog here, and you've got your cell phone going, and you're putting your makeup on, whatever it is. It's just a whole different experience. Beta mode is active engagement, and this is what we want people to be doing when they're looking at our ad. We want them to be actively engaged, not passively not paying attention, okay? So this is a, a key thing. So here's the key question for you. How do we come to grips with this? How do we take somebody from this alpha mode where they're not paying any attention to beta mode where they are paying attention? And the answer is right here on the next slide, fortunately. And here's the answer right here. And this is what you call a Ford excursion. I bought this vehicle in 2001. I've got six kids. At the time, I had three kids, and number four was on the way and was coming within, I don't know, a month or something. And my wife said, look, we need a bigger car. The, the minivan is not big enough. We need a car that's big enough that we can put all the kids in there, but far enough apart so they can't touch each other. Steve, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So. We, we, we bought this Ford Excursion, and I'm the kind of guy that I hate going to the dealership. It, it, it's horrible. Don't get me started on car dealers. So I've got this guy I call, and here's what I do. I tell him exactly what I want, and he brings the car over to me. So I called the guy. I said, look, I'm looking for the Excursion. He said, what package do you want? I said, I want the CD player, the leather, the blah, blah, blah. I don't know much about cars. I said, I want it to look cool. He goes, what color do you want? I said, well, you know, I think I saw this green one. I want a green one. He goes, green, what color green do you want? There's two different greens. I said, I don't know, what color greens are there? He says, well, there's one that's kind of this deep, foresty, Eddie Bauer, kind of cool-looking green. I think it's called forest green or something. That one's pretty cool. I said, what's the other one called? He said, ah, oh, you don't want that one. I don't know what it's called either, but it's like, uh, it's like army green. I said, that's the one I want, army green. He goes, why on earth would you want army green? I said, well, you know, you know, kind of a strange duck. I don't want to be driving the same stinking car as everybody else. Give me something a little bit unique, a little bit different. Give me the ugly green one. But besides, my wife's going to be driving it. Who cares? So sure enough, <laughs> I get the green Ford Excursion, and my kids absolutely love this car. They call it Shrek, the big, ugly, green monster. 
And uh, literally, anytime we'd go somewhere, they'd say, let's go in Shrek, and they get in Shrek. And we still actually have Shrek all these years later. It's kind of been put out to pasture where we have it. But here's the interesting thing. Here's what I noticed. As soon as we got Shrek, guess what I started noticing? I remember about two weeks after we got Shrek, we were in the parking lot at Home Depot. I was waiting for my wife. She ran in to get some paint or something. I was sitting out there with the kids where they, while they were not touching each other in the car. And as we're sitting there, guess what happens? Here comes another Shrek. Same color, same everything, ugly, nasty-looking car comes driving past. And I'm thinking, who is this idiot that's driving the same ugly car? I can't believe somebody would actually pay good money for one of these. A couple minutes later, guess what? Another one. Second Shrek. Not the same one again. Second one comes driving by. A few minutes later, guess what? Third one comes driving by. And I'm thinking, who are these people that would buy this monstrosity? I'm sitting there for less than 10 minutes, and I see three Shreks. Same make, same model, same color. Here's my question for you. Have you ever had that happen to you? You buy a new vehicle, and then all of a sudden you start to realize that everybody on the face of the planet Earth has the exact same make, model, and color as you? How is this even possible? Where did these people come from? Where were all these cars before I bought this vehicle? And the answer is it's reticular activating system. Here's what you need to understand. Your brain is literally, literally, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, scanning the environment, looking for things that fit these categories, number one, number two, and number three. Familiar, unusual, and problematic. It, it, I don't know much about about how radars work because I'm not in the military, but I have seen weather on TV and that thing goes around in a circle and when it finds a storm it beeps. You know how that works? This is what your brain is doing 24 hours a day, seven days a week, even while you're asleep. It's looking for stuff that's familiar, unusual, or problematic. It's a literal part of your brain called the reticular activator that is looking for these things. It's looking for things that are familiar, unusual, or problematic. And when it finds them, it flags you and on a conscious level it says, Hey, go check this out and see what it's all about. So when you're sitting there at Home Depot and you just bought a new car and you see it go by, there might be thousands or at least hundreds of cars in that parking lot, and your brain says, hey, look, another one just like yours. Whereas 2, 3, 8, 10, 15, 20 cars that aren't like yours pass by, you never even notice them. You know what? Do you see the immediate ramification of this on your mailer or your magazine ad or your newspaper, radio, whatever it is? If you don't have something in that marketing piece, in that ad, that's familiar, unusual, or problematic, here's what's going to happen. The same thing that happens when every other stinking car goes past you and you don't ever notice it because guess what? It's just another car. Here's a good way to look at it. If you're driving down the freeway at 79 miles an hour and there's billboards going flying past, here's a good question for you. What were the last five billboards you passed? And the answer is you have no idea because you weren't paying any attention. But I promise you, if your name was Cornelius Oglethorpe, and there was a billboard that said Cornelius Oglethorpe is wanted for murder, you would see it and you would notice it because it would jump off that billboard as if it had a 900-pound sledge smashing your car. Reticular activator is extraordinarily powerful. Hopefully you can feel that in the excitement of my voice. This is really, really important stuff. Anything that's familiar, unusual, or problematic to JS, JS is John Smith, that's your prospect, is what we call an activator. So we've got to put this into marketing. Now, an activator is anything literally that anything literally that snaps a person from my alpha mode into beta mode, okay? And it can be accomplished with some of these things. Pictures, sounds, or words. Now, if you're in print media, you're kind of limited to pictures and words. Sounds would be more for radio or television, maybe some things online and so forth. But there's different ways that you can break this pattern. In uh, a lot of ads, you've th seen things that are shocking or strange or sexy or celebrities unusual, funny, cute, all those kinds of things. But we've got to be careful with that kind of stuff because if we're just funny or strange, people say all the time, sex sells. Well, really it doesn't. It interrupts. But here's what we've got to be careful of. If we interrupt somebody with something that's not relevant or important to them or doesn't tie to your product or service, in this case dentistry, then here's what's going to happen. They're going to go from alpha mode right back into they're going to go from beta mode back into alpha mode, and you're going to miss the opportunity. So we've got to be careful. We can't just put weird, unusual junk on the page and say, hey, people are going to look at the, the screaming baby or the, the uh, wildebeest charging. We've got to put things on there that not only get them to take a look because they're familiar, unusual, or problematic, but also are important and relevant, okay? So here's what we've got to understand. The activator has to be something that gives the prospect an emotional charge, and it has to be... Here's the keywords. They're in red on your screen right now, important and relevant. Write those down. These are what we call hot buttons. If an activator is also important and relevant, we call it a hot button. So here's some of the hot buttons for dentistry. 
looking better. And this is the one that almost all dental pieces that you see focus on. Hey, you want to look good? You want your smile to be great? You want, you know, smile that lasts. This is one of the hot buttons, but there's also other ones. Avoiding serious problems, fear of pain, and we've seen, we've seen some of these ads that address this, but maybe not very well. Financial concerns, and I'll show you some examples of how this stuff can be actually implemented here in just a minute time getting around to it. You know, this is one of the biggest reasons that people don't do dentistry. It's just because they never get around to it. They don't have a huge problem. Nothing is currently causing them pain. Nothing seems to be going wrong. And so they just kind of don't go. It's the same reason I keep not taking my wife to uh, the symphony, because I just kind of keep not getting around to it. I'm not saying I don't want to go to the symphony, but I'm just saying that for 90 bucks, I'd probably rather spend that money on something else. And you say, well, you, you shouldn't compare those two things because they're completely different. Well, here's the, the attitude is exactly the same. It's called, yeah, stuff that I know I probably ought to do, but eh, I don't know. Maybe when I get around to it, if my wife badgers me enough, then I'll take her. If my tooth hurts enough, then I'll go. This is one of the things that happens all the time. And we've got to get people to just take a look and say, hey, here's some reasons why you should go to the dentist. I'll show you how to implement this here shortly, okay? So interrupt. Interrupt based on a, an activator. If the activator is also important and relevant, what do we call that? A hot button. The hot buttons are the things that are important and relevant to your prospect relative to whatever it is you sell, in your case, dentistry. Okay? Once we struck the emotional cord, now we've got to get them engaged. We use headlines or subheadlines that promise the reader that if they keep reading the ad or the marketing piece or listening, given different media, that they're going to get information that will facilitate their making the best decision possible. Okay? Maybe... Uh, not going to the dentist is not the best decision. We've got to help them understand that. Again, not sales facilitating information, but actual decision type information. Helping them make the biggest, the best decision possible. Here's one of the things you need to take away from MYM. If you go to my website, five mis five, uh, five mistakecd.com, get the audio program. Here's what you're going to hear me say over and over again. Your job is to facilitate the decision making process of the prospect. We've got to help them understand why they should go to the dentist, why they should not avoid the dentist, and when they do decide to go to the dentist, why should they choose you instead of the other 16 billion dentists that are in your five-mile radius? And I don't know if there's five billion or not, but it sure feels like it, doesn't it? Okay? So interrupt and engage. Once we've done that, we've got to educate them. And this is all about building a case, just like an attorney would, okay? Build a case to give the prospect the information they need to feel in control of the decision, give them confidence to move forward in the buying process. If it's an advertisement, we can educate in the body copy or in the actual ad itself. Sometimes we're limited by time and space, so we have to use a, what we call a marketing tool. This is something that we can send to the prospect, a brochure, a report, a DVD, something online. Don't get too caught up on this. We'll show you plenty of examples of all this in just a second, okay? It's just like building an attorney's case. This is a great way for you to think about this. You've got to build a case just like an attorney would. I'm no attorney, but I've watched a lot of law and order on TV, so I, I kind of got the, the drill down. I understand how it works. And yes, I'm joking, but no, I'm really not, because I don't think most of us are attorneys, but I think most of us, through exposure to you know, lawsuits, or you maybe been on a jury, or maybe you watch law and order. Who knows? You understand how this works. Think about this. Your prospects are the jury. Your product or service is the defendant and you're the attorney in charge, and it's a life or death sentence. This is serious stuff. Using platitudes won't cut. Go back to the OJ trial, and at this point in, in history, I have to clarify which OJ trial. OJ, the, the one where he cut people's heads off, that one, not the one where he stole people's junk, the first one. Okay? OJ was on trial for you know, murdering his wife and this other guy. What if, what if his attorneys would have come into the courtroom and said, Hey, you know what, O.J. didn't do this because he's a nice guy, man. He was, he's on TV commercials, he's been in movies, he ran for 2,000 yards as a Buffalo Bill. I mean, this guy, he would never do anything like this. And, oh, by the way, he couldn't have done it because by, you, you didn't know this, but he was not there. He was somewhere else. He was gone. He, he has an alibi. He was, he was out with some friends. Do you think that the other attorney is going to eat that for lunch? Of course they are. They're going to want to know, where was he? Who was he with? When did he leave? Who saw him? What was he wearing? Where did he go? Does he have any receipts? If you watch much Law & Order, you know this one always gets them. Does he have a toll, ta a toll booth receipt that he can prove? He's O.J. Simpson, for crying out loud. Somebody must have seen him. Somebody must have taken a picture. And they're going to want proof. They're going to want evidence. And we've got to build a case. But here's what we do too often in marketing. We say, we're a dentist. 
That's pretty much the message they hear. That was a pretty lame impression, but I'll say it one more time. We're a dentist. We make teeth look pretty. Come to us. Come get us some teeth white. Make them look nice. We're a dentist. Yippee. And your prospects look at that and go, you know what? I have to mow the lawn right now. You know, by the way, I got to change a diaper, and I and I've I've got to watch Law and Order on TV right now. I don't have time for that. And they just, they don't even notice it. It's that it's an alpha mode thing. Remember alpha mode, okay? So, let's talk about how to get through this. Interrupt, engage, educate. The fourth component is offer. We want the marketing piece to contain a risk lowering offer. Encourage the prospect to take the next step. I'll show you some of these in just a minute. There's two kinds of offers, generally speaking. The first one is what we call an information offer. This gives John Smith more information to help facilitate the buying process. Again, I talked earlier about marketing tools and information offer. You say, well, what do you mean an information offer for a dentist? How about this? Give, giving them something, sending them something that helps them understand the process of what to expect. You know, one of the big issues, we're not going to talk about this right now, but, but just by way of other topics that are critical, do you realize that when somebody comes into your office and they haven't been properly educated that there might be additional treatments that are going to be required? You completely catch them off guard, and when it comes time to tell them that they need $1,300 worth of additional treatment, they stall, they put it off, not because they can't afford it, but because you're asking them to make a $1,300 decision when they weren't anticipating it, and it catches them completely off guard. So we can, in our information offers, educate. Here's what you need to understand about doing business with us. Here's how you need to understand how to make the best decision when it comes to choosing a dentist. Here's what you need to look for in a dentist. Here's what you need to watch out for in a dentist. Here's what you need to expect when you come. All of these things can be put in these information offers. <sighs> That's a lot of information. Don't, pay, don't, don't get too caught up on that. I'm going to show you some ads here in just a second. You'll see it all come together, okay? Next, incentive offers, getting people that are ready, now buyers, to act quickly. I'll show you some of those also. You've probably utilized some incentive offers in your marketing. Here's a key thing, though. We want to get uh, future buyers, in addition to now buyers, to control the target market. This is going to be a huge part of the second part of this webinar today is talking to future buyers, nurturing future buyers. How do we say something to our uh, target base that starts to nurture them towards coming to us if it doesn't happen today, maybe next week or next month or next six months, but we've got to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it, but uh, we've, got to use, we've got to use some tools and some tactics to get this to happen, okay? So let me show you a few pieces here. I'm going to show you a bunch of pieces, and I want you to realize that not every one of these pieces is going to be appropriate for your situation or for your style or for the feel and the, the branding that you want to portray for your particular practice. But I am telling you that these are all pieces that we've put together. We've tested the vast majority of them, and these are pieces that work based on the principles that we just talked about. Okay, so one of the things that we know is that the target prospect generally and on a case-by-case -case basis, we need to take a look at this. But generally speaking, it's going to be women. We want to be a little bit cute. We want to be a little bit funny. We want to be a little bit lighthearted. We don't want to be too serious. We don't want to be too stern. We don't want to beat them over the head with facts and figures and information, although we do want to give them some facts and figures and information. But we want to be a little bit easier on the eye. We want to be a little bit easier and a little bit funner. And we want to handle it in, a, in an appropriate way. So we use a little bit of a pun on this one need a little dental work or maybe just a checkup. And it, it's a little bit funny because we've got these guys doing some literal work on teeth. Admit it, your teeth could use a little attention from the dentist, and uh, it's literally a little attention from these dentists. Now, again, I'm going to show you probably 15 different styles and, and forms on this, and I want you to just pay attention to the similarities throughout them. And I want you to think first and foremost about interruption. Does this get people to take a look and pay attention? Do, also, hot buttons. Do we start to hit on issues that are important and relevant to people? Issues like, if you remember the list from earlier, uh, looking good, that was one. Uh, fear, overcoming the, the fear of pain. Time, taking the time. Money, thinking it's going to cost too much. So just stick with me here. This is the back of what one of these postcards might, might look like. No need to do without with Dr. Martin. We treat new patients like old friends. You'll see here on the middle right, there's seven reasons patients love Dr. Brian Martin. And we don't spend a ton of time there, but we let them know, look, there's no wait. It's pain-free, easy hours, no insurance hassles, no dental speak. There's movies, best value. If you were putting this postcard together for yourself, you could easily modify those seven things to be things that you do. Maybe you don't have movies. It doesn't matter. It's not about movies. It's about having reasons, educating people to say, hey, this dentist sounds pretty darn good. Because I have a pretty solid belief about dentists, which is most people think that all dentists are about the stinking same. 
And that's, that's too bad because they're not. And you know they're not. And you know that you're not the, the same as all your neighboring dentists. You're different. You're better. So let's communicate this to people, okay? Here's a fun one that we use. It's a monopoly type of a play. Go directly to the dentist. Special money-saving offers on back. Do not risk your teeth. Do not live in pain. The back of that postcard, don't take a chance with your smile. And we get them to take a look. There's no smiling people on this, but guess what? They're going to read it. Charlie's brown mother is not speaking right now. Seven reasons patients love Dr. Martin. We've got $65 towards any dental service. That's an offer. There's lots of different offers. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time today talking about what they are, what they should be, although we have a very definitive idea of what they are and what they should be. We've tested this with Steve, so we have a really good idea of what they should be. We know which offers work better and which ones work worse. We know which ones bring in deadbeat patients and which ones bring in good patients. But that's not the point of this discussion right now. It's a more high-level discussion we're having at this particular moment. Next, this card may be kept until needed or sold. Get out of pain free. Use this card for $65 towards any dental treatment, and it's kind of a get, a get out of jail free card kind of a play. Here's one that I like a lot. We've actually got multiple iterations of this. We actually have some that use uh, a woman that uh, looks like, uh, you know, a 30-something year old housewife. She's not super uh, drop-dead gorgeous, but she's, you know, attractive enough. Uh, but we also have this one uh, going uh, towards men. What's your favorite dentist excuse? I'm scared. I'm fine. I don't have time. Don't worry. You're only risking your teeth. And it's a little bit of a, of a tongue-in-cheek. We're not trying to scare them, but it, it gets the point across. These three common dentist excuses and why none of them are valid. I'm scared. And then we talk about how we've got ways to overcome that. I'm fine. And we tell them that, no, you're not fine. I don't have time. And we tell them that you'd better make time. And we do it in a very short, easy, un easy to understand way. Here's some that are a little bit fun, too. Apparently not everyone is thrilled to see the dentist. We're talking to people, and we're acknowledging the fact that, you know what, you don't really want to go to the dentist. Relax. We can make your visit quick, easy, and painless. Why don't you like to go to the dentist? Well, look on there. Quick, easy, and painless. It's a pain. It's a hassle. I don't have time. It's going to be painful. And we acknowledge that. Why would we not acknowledge what everybody is actually feeling? It's the 800-pound elephant in the room. No, elephants are bigger than that. It's the huge elephant. How big are, however big elephants are, that's what it is in the room. Yet people, dentists, marketing people, they just don't want to acknowledge that. Well, if I say that people don't want to come to the dentist, then they won't want to come to the dentist. Bull hockey, yeah, they will. In fact, they'll look at this and they'll go, yeah, you know what, that's how I feel. And they respond. Another version of that, apparently not everyone is thrilled to see the dentist. And, the yellow things are fun and they're unusual, and you notice this. When it comes in your, in your post office box or your mailbox, you, you notice it. Another version of this uh, on the next slide, not everyone is thrilled to see the dentist. And then on the back of this, we take the theme and we put the frowny, smiley face and the sort of semi, not quite happy, smiley face. New sedation methods mean you'll never feel a thing. Now, you might look at that and say, well, we don't do sedation dentistry. It doesn't matter. See, that's irrelevant. What's relevant is we're finding ways to reach through. We're talking about hot buttons that are important and relevant. We're doing it in a way that breaks through the clutter and gets people to pay, oh, attention. Are you really afraid? We've got some sedation methods. If you're just a little bit afraid, we've got some for that, too. Here's one that we use a lot in Steve's practice. This has proven to be really, a, uh, I would say, a, a solid, ongoing provider of new patients. When it comes to seeing the dentist, are you a big chicken or a little chicken? Relax. We can help either kind. And we've got another version of it. Are you, are you a little chicken when it comes to seeing the dentist? Obviously, it's a play on words. It's a little chicken. We've got the black chicken that kind of stands out. It looks kind of funny. Join the crowd. We're acknowledging that you're scared. Are you a little chicken when it comes to seeing the dentist? And then on the back, same thing. New sedation methods means you'll never see a thing. If you're a big chicken, we've got oral sedation. If you're a little chicken, we've got not nitrous oxide, and I'm telling you, people just eat this up. They love it because it's different, it's fun, it's unique, and it gets them. It sh it, here's what it does. It grabs them by the shoulders, and it just shakes them a little bit. It doesn't pound them to the ground. It doesn't do a body slam on them, but it grabs them by the shoulders, and it just shakes them a little bit. And here's what we find. People go, yeah, yeah, now that you mention it, and it automatically puts a feeling. Remember, interrupt and engage, as I said earlier, is based on emotions. It puts a feeling in their heart. You say, well, that's kind of cheesy to say, Rich. Well, you know what? It's true. It puts a feeling in the heart that says, you know what? I like this dentist. This dentist I like. We haven't seen a picture of this dentist. We haven't seen the cheesy butt pictures of the stupid people smiling. And if you put those in your ads, I'm not saying that you're horrible and it's never going to work. I'm just saying, you know what? 
guess what all the other 95 ads that show up in their magazines, newspapers, and mailboxes look like? The exact same. No wonder nobody notices them because they all look the same. This creates a different feel, a different look, and again, it grabs them and it gently shakes them and says, hey, come on, pay attention real quick. Which of these three dental services not covered by insurance do you want for free? Targeting the non-insured. Do you want a fluoride treatment, teeth whitening, oral cancer screening? Here's another one. Lo hates the dentist, loves the dentist. Guess which one goes to Dr. Martin, the most kid, Martin, the most kid-friendly dentist in Grapevine. Now, obviously, this would only be applicable to send to families that ha uh, have children. You don't want to send this. I mean, Steve's got a uh, one of his practices up in North Dallas that almost exclusively caters to young uh, professionals. You know, the old yuppies. But uh, that's that. You wouldn't send this postcard. But look at this. Which one is the, is the most kid-friendly dentist in Grapevine? If you've got kids, guess what? You see somebody claiming to be the most kid-friendly dentist in Grapevine, they like that. Nine out of ten kids hate going to the dentist. This one goes to Dr. Martin, the most kid-friendly dentist. He's the only one that's smiling. All the rest look, you know, petrified. Same take, different set where all the kids look the same. Nine out of ten kids hate going to the dentist. This one goes to Dr. Martin, the most kid-friendly dentist in Grapevine. This stuff breaks through the clutter. Remember, that was what we said at the very beginning. Break through the clutter and get noticed. Beautiful smile, not a lot of moolah. This overcomes the money objection. Now you say, well, that has a smiling person. Yeah, it does. That's fine. And she's attractive and all that kind of stuff. But we're not just focusing in on, look how beautiful her smile is. Hey, wouldn't you like to have a great smile? No. We have invented a word called not a lot of moolah that we've tested. We've looked at it. And here's what we found. People with ever, never having experienced this word, not a lot of moolah before, they instantly understand, oh, it's not going to cost that much. Another version, don't let minor dental problems become major dental problems, and uh, he's blocking his teeth with money. This gets the point across. A few more just to get, overcome the avoiding the dentist. Consider yourself re reminded to visit the dentist. Avoiding the dentist, and these people are hiding. And we're kind of poking fun at them in an appropriate tongue-in-cheek not that we hate you, Gway, but hey, we hey, come on, we know you're avoiding the dentist kind of a way. This stuff breaks through the clutter. It's effective. All right, this next one scares some people, so be 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 ready. You're going to get shocked. The one at the bottom, scared of the dentist. This little pill can calm you down and make your visit bearable. And you say, well, I don't know if I'd want to send that out. Okay, well then don't send it out. But here's what you do know: when it shows up in somebody's mailbox, they look at that and they go, oh, what's that? Oh, oh, dentist pill. Oh, okay and it sinks in. Interrupt, engage. 59-minute door-to-door dental appointment. This is what we would send to offices. Minimize lost work. And again, where's the happy, smiling people? Here's what we want them to know. If you need dental work and you're in a time crunch, we can accommodate that, okay? These ones, again, are tongue-in-cheek. We're scolding the patient or the prospect, but we're doing it in an appropriate tongue-in-cheek way by making them right on the board like you did when you were a kid. I will not avoid the dentist. I will see the dentist every six months. And as they flip that over, there's a message that talks about, hey, don't avoid the dentist. Here's one we put together for cosmetic dentistry. This takes it to a different level. Cosmetic dentistry for people who are picky, fussy, persnickety, particularly, particular demanding, and dis, just downright hard to please. As you flip this over, <clears throat> she's not smiling here. Here's what she's doing here. She's being picky, fussy, persnickety, particular, and demanding, and hard to please. That's what we want this lady to say and with her face. And if she, you flip this over, okay, now she's happy. If you're a stickler for details, if your standards are ridiculously high, then you're going to love Dr. Michelle Williams. You get a free smile consultation. And let's read this. I want you to understand about educate. Interrupt, engage, educate. Some say she has OCD. Some say she's a perfectionist. Everyone agrees she's the best hands down. Let's face it, there are hundreds of dentists out there who perform cosmetic procedures, and most of them do a pretty good job, which is fine if you're looking for a pretty good job. Then there's Dr. Michelle Williams. See, what we're doing is we're hitting this objection of, ah, all dentists are the same. No, they're not. Her attention to detail is absolutely legendary. To call her persnickety would be an insulting understatement. Her middle name is fussy, literally. She's not the cheapest, and she won't get you in and out the fastest, not even close. But if you're bound and determined to have the best of the best of the best when it comes to your smile, she's the only option to call. Wow. Does that position her as the dentist that's going to get it freaking right the first time? Yeah. It's pretty crystal clear. Here's what this isn't. Imagine how great you'll look if you get come to the dentist. I'm telling you, there's a reason none of that junk is working, because it doesn't work. How do you pick a dentist? This is a good Yellow Pages ad right here, also appropriate to use in a magazine, mailer, doesn't matter. 
How do you pick a dentist? Ask these eight questions to make sure your dentist stacks up. Again, it doesn't matter what, your dent what you do as a dentist. It only matters that you've got eight things. It doesn't have to be eight. It could be six. It doesn't matter. Here's the point. What do you do that's better? Let's help people facilitate the decision-making process. And then we go through laser technology and painless laser and all these other things. I don't want to read that right now. You can see that, and you do most of that stuff probably. The point is this is how you help people pick a dentist. You actually help them understand what the parameters are. How often do you uh, go to the dentist's office? You, personally. The answer is every day. It's your job. How often do most people go to the dentist? The, the answer is not that often. Think of it this way. If you wanted to go buy a piano right now, how often do you buy pianos? Answer, never. So what do you know about pianos? Nothing. If you wanted to get new insurance for your home, homeowner's insurance, they jacked your rate and you need to go compare. What do you know about insurance? Nothing. Here's why, because you never deal with that. Once every, never you deal with that. So we've got to understand, people have got to be educated. All right, uh, Greg, we're going to skip the poll. We don't have time for it. Uh, if you want more information about this stuff, go to 5mistakecd.com. Request this CD. We'll send it over to you. Like I said, no credit card, whatever. We'll just, we'll just ship it over to you. You can also download it, listen to it on your iPod if you want to. Okay, also a bonus offer. Let us review your marketing pieces. Here's what you can do email or fax your marketing piece to me personally, rich at mymonline.com, write that down, or you can fax it to me at the number listed on the screen, 817-796-2967, email it or fax it, and, and uh, we've got a grading sheet that we use that goes through the marketing equation, interrupt, engage, educate, offer, and a few other parameters that we haven't discussed on this call but are important and relevant, and we'll give it a grade from 0 to 100, just like it was a paper in school, and let's see how you stack up. I mean, maybe, maybe you think I'm crazy. All this stuff doesn't really make a difference. Go ahead and send it over and let us take a look, okay? Limit two reviews per Crown Council member. I mean, give us a couple days to do this. It depends. Usually when I make this kind of an offer, we get in, inundated with, with ads to review. And that's okay. Send them over, but just please be a little bit patient as we work through them. I've got a staff over here of about six or seven consultants that are going to be doing it. And uh, so it just, takes a, it just takes a little time, okay? So... Let's move on now. Let's talk about saying it often. The key to massive response is massive exposure on a consistent basis. Okay? This is, we're getting into territory here that almost nobody talks about. You go to the, your average marketing guru, and it's just, they're not going to talk about this. It's just not something that's being put out there very much. But you've got to understand this. Uh, here's what I want you to understand. Uh, it, it's a good illustrative example. There's a company called Wald Drug. I don't know if you've heard of this company before. I don't know if you've ex experienced this before. I took my family on vacation to Yellowstone Park one time, and then we went on to, uh, what do you call that place? Is in the movie with uh, Nicolas Cage. I'm drawing a blank. The president's heads are in granite. What do you call that? Mount Rushmore. Thank you. Mount Sorry. Rushmore, Rich. Yeah, yeah. Wh whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Mount Rushmore. <laughs> and we, we went and saw Mount Rushmore. And we started seeing these signs that said Wall Drug before we got to Mount Rushmore. But then after we left Mount Rushmore, we're in South Dakota, if you're not familiar with the territory. We're driving on Interstate 90. We're heading from west to east across the state. And we start seeing these signs for Wall Drug. And we started seeing them just in huge quantities. And I'll show a few of them to you on here. Here's one that says Badlands Maps, Wall Drug. Another one, Six Foot Rabbit, Wall Drug. And they just kept coming over and over. This one says, there are your kids bored. Look at Wall Drug. A scene on the Denver Post. In a country music television. Wall Drug has wood carvings. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The number is silver dollar display. And everything seemed to have a different message, but they were all for this Wall Drug. Here's one that says, Wall Drug's on exit 110. They sell Kodak film. All these different things. Refreshing free ice water at Wall Drug. It's cool. Wall Drug. Stop in and take a look. And it just keeps going. Skinny Saloon. Wall Drug. Well, I'm going to uh, kind of filter through these. I'll let you take a look at a few of these. Here's what we found out. When we got to Wall, South Dakota, about 50 miles from Rapid City, that's where the Rocky Noggins are, the Mount Rushmore, here's what we found. I, I discovered about in the neighborhood of 80 to 100 billboards in a 50-mile stretch. And I want you to think about that for a second. If you're driving 90 miles an hour, like you know you do on Interstate 90 in the middle of nowhere, that's about one billboard every 17 to 22 seconds. It's crazy, billboard after billboard. And uh, unfortunately, at the time, I had two small children. I've got six. We had all six of them. 
and uh, some of the younger ones were still asleep. They'd just fallen asleep when we left, so we couldn't wake them up. My wife wouldn't let me. I wanted to see what this was all about. Anyway, long story short, we get to Sioux City, South Dakota later that night. I fire up my laptop, and I think, man, I've got to see what this wall drug is all about. And I find what I consider to be the most shocking marketing statistic I've ever seen in my life. Here's what it was. Out of all the cars that pass wall drug, guess what percent actually stop? Answer, 70%. 70%. 20,000 visitors a day in the summer, which is their, their peak season. How can you explain that? And the answer is, well, it's pretty simple. They've got 80 to 100 billboards. Now, here's a good question for you from a marketing standpoint. If you took the number of billboards, let's say it was 100, and you lowered it to 50, would that make a difference in the response ratio from 70% to something lower? And the answer is maybe, maybe not, because 50 is still a lot. But what if you took it clear down to 10? Would that make a difference? And the answer is probably yes. And what if you took it clear down to 2? Two billboards in a 50-mile stretch, would it make a difference? Probably so. What if you took it clear down to 1 or 0? Would that make a difference? And you're probably getting sick of looking at the signs just on this presentation. Imagine what you feel like in real life when you're trying to look at these signs and you're driving. I mean, it's, it's obnoxious almost. But 70% conversion ratio. So here's a good question for you. To take this methodology, what I call literally wall drugging a prospect, it doesn't have to be with billboards. This has nothing to do with billboards. It has to do with the repeated frequency of a marketing message. It could be in a magazine or a newspaper, on a radio, on a television. It could be in their mailbox. How many marketing pieces should you send? Well, let's understand something called the educational spectrum here. And I'm going to put this on your screen so you can take a look. And we've got to understand, why do prospects not buy right away? If you send out your marketing piece, your mailer lands in somebody's mailbox, what are the reasons that they wouldn't buy right away? Well, it's pretty simple. They feel like their current situation is fine in their opinion. It might not be fine, but they think it is. They just got the idea. They want to look at other dentists first. Maybe they've got some objections. They think they can't afford it. They're scared. They don't have time. The biggest one is they just keep putting it off for no particular reason. And here's what happens. We send out our mailers. We put our ad in the, in the uh, publication. Now, problem number one is if it's full of platitudes, it's not going to work very well. But even if it's not full of platitudes, if you send it out there, you're going to have a certain amount of response, but you're going to have a certain number of people that look at it and say, eh, I don't know, I just don't want to get around to it or I'm scared, or whatever these objections may be. And here's the point. If we send that marketing out, and we spend X number of dollars on it, we may very well draw a conclusion that says, well, it just doesn't work very well, when in reality, what we've got to do is more like pumping a well. We've got to keep pumping it to where we overcome resistance by repeated exposure. It's called wall drugging. Wall drugging. Here's why it works. There's three reasons. And I'm going to put them on your screen here. We're going to talk about one and two very quickly, and then number three for a few more minutes, and that's going to wrap us up for the day. But please, whatever you do, if you're eating your sandwich and you're thinking, I've got to get back, do me a favor. Hear me out. This is massively important stuff we're about to talk about right now. Okay? Number one, winning by forfeit. If you're hitting them over and 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 over, and if you're getting sick of hearing me say over and over and over and over, that's the point then you're going to win by forfeit. Just like in sports when the other team doesn't show up, if you're the only one showing up, you're going to win. In my particular neighborhood, we've got a doctor, Huckabee, that just sends stuff freaking all the time, and we see it all the time, and he must be the only dentist around here, which isn't true, but he's winning by forfeit because he's the only one showing up. Consistency credit. If you send stuff all the time, if you put stuff in the magazine, if you market all the time, people are going to start to they're going to start to equate your ability to market to them on a consistent basis with your ability to perform service in a consistent, efficient way, i.e., if you can market good, you must be a good dentist. That's interesting. But here's the biggest one right here, and I'm going to spend a few minutes on this, so please, again, don't hang up just quite yet. I know it's getting towards the end of the hour, but this is it's really important stuff. It's called accelerated discontentment. You can make people's current situation seem worse and worse and offer them a shoulder to cry on. What if you could make somebody's dental situation same worse and worse to them? The answer is you absolutely can. I'm going to show you how and why right here. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I hate graphs, but sorry, I'm going to show you a graph. And you're going to have to pay really, really close attention. This is going to take about three minutes to go through. And if this is freaking you out because you're looking at it going, I hate graphs, just muscle through it. Come on, man, let's do this. Okay, on this graph, on the left, we have what's called discontentment, satisfaction. 
how happy are you with your current situation? We're talking specifically about dentistry right now. It could be anything. It could be your car. It could be your spouse. It could be your laptop computer. In this case, it's dentistry. At the top, it's I've had it. I'm so sick of my dental situation that I'm going to go do something. It's either too painful or my teeth are corroded or somebody maybe said something and I, and I, and I, and I was embarrassed but I've had it, that's where people actually take action and, and do something about their problem. Down here at the bottom, you see it says fine, and at the very bottom it says bliss. Here's what that means. I, I'm good with my situation. I'm not going to take any action. Here's what you need to understand. The vast majority of your prospects, I would even dare say 90 to 95% are happy with their current situation. Either the dentist they go to all the time or not going to the dentist at all. And when you send out 10,000 mailers and only 21 respond, you say, well, how in the heck is that possible? And the answer is because they're all fine with their current situation. Here's what it looks like over time. Each of these marks going from left to right on that horizontal scale represents a month. And over the course of time, people's contentment or happiness or satisfaction with, in this case, their dental situation, it fluctuates. Maybe they uh, saw one of their friends and they had great teeth and they felt a little self-conscious. So they went from feeling fine to feeling discontent. And here's what we see. There's exclamation points on the screen that represent simply what I call an incident. Something happens that makes them not contented. Maybe uh, they watched an infomercial for teeth whitening and they, it, they got it in their brain that they wanted their teeth to be white. Maybe they had a pain in their tooth, but then it went away and they went down and in more into the happy, I'm feeling content. And then if you look uh, the third one to the right, the uh, third exclamation point, we're now about 18 months into their life here, and we get up to about a five-level discontentment. Maybe this was uh, they went to a, uh, a job interview, and they didn't get the job, and they asked their friend, man, I didn't get the job, and the friend said, well, maybe it's your teeth. And it just crushed them, and they thought, man, I've got to do something about this. And you see up here at number 10, 10 level, I've had it. Something happens that finally pushes them over the edge. Here's what you need to understand. You can definitely influence pushing them over the edge. Let me show you how, how it works. I'm now putting on the screen pink triangles at the bottom. This represents a marketing effort on a concerted level. This represents sending them one marketing piece every month or so. Maybe it's in their mailbox, maybe it's in a magazine, and obviously if you've been through the last part of this webinar, you know I'm talking about powerfully stated, well-articulated, hot-button hitting marketing pieces. Not the usual junk that you've seen for the last hundred years, but the good stuff. But here's what happens. Because once a month is really not that frequent, it starts to push their discontentment. So when that first event happens, I can't remember what it was, when the second event happens, we've now had six, seven, eight, nine exposures, so they actually are more discontent. When they see our marketing piece, they say, yeah, you know what, you know, this, this problem is really worse than I thought. We get over here to the third one, we're pushing it up, but let me show you the real magic here. Watch this. Watch this. Green. This represents a lot of marketing. And here's what happens. We push that discontentment level up higher. Now when they have a minor problem, because we've been hitting them over the head with, hey, it's not that expensive. Hey, it doesn't hurt. Hey, you need to take it. Do you need to take advantage of this offer? Hey, I will visit the dentist every six months. When they get that in that naturally occurring problem, and here's what you've got to understand. This is the most important part of this most important discussion. You personally have no control, zero control, over these naturally occurring incidences of them getting done with their job interview and their friend saying your teeth look like junk. You have no control over when they're going to have pain in their teeth. You have no control over when they're going to visit their old friend who has beautiful teeth and get some thinking about it. You can't control that, but here's what you can control. You being there on a consistent basis so that when those incidences do occur, they seem much more urgent than they otherwise would. And here's the cool part. You're the one that's been there every week, every month, every couple weeks, whatever the case is. So when they finally decide to do something, guess who's there? Yeah, you. This is called accelerated discontentment. This is on the CDs. You can hear all about it. There's a graph. You can download the, the book. You can see this stuff. FiveMistakesCD.com. I, I really encourage you to, to listen to this and, and to understand why this works. Let's, let me introduce you to the best book on marketing. You've probably read this book. It's called Green Eggs and Ham. This is exactly what happens in this book. If you're not familiar with it, there's a character named Sam I Am. He's trying to sell this thing that looks ugly and gross and disgusting called Green Eggs and Ham, but it turns out in the end, if you know the story, it actually is very, very desirable and good. And what happens? He goes to the prospect and he says, do you want some? And the prospect says, no, I don't want any of that. 
So he comes back with a different approach, and he says, do you want some here or there? I don't want it here or there. I don't want it anywhere. I don't like green eggs and ham. Well, how about in a box or with a fox or on a plane or in a train or with a mouse or in a house? And he keeps coming back and hitting them again and again and again and again. It's like your kids when they ask you to go to Chuck E. Cheese and you say no, and then they ask you again, and then they ask you again and again and again and again, and finally you say, look, if I take you to Chuck E. Cheese, will you at least shut up about it? And you end up taking them. And when Sam I Am kept asking, and here's what we've got to do in our marketing, not only does it have to be powerfully stated, well articulated, it also has to be what? Consistent and hit them again and again and again. And in uh, example, Steve's practice is we hit them at least once a month consistently for the rest of forever. And here's what happens. You see increased response over time, not decreased response over time. So learn more. Go to the... Uh, the website, 5 mistakescdcom Also, uh, we're not going to hit that. Let me just scroll here and put this on the screen. If you do want to uh, send your ad in for evaluation, I'll leave this on the screen so you can see it. Go ahead and send it over. Uh, that's really all I have for you, Steve. I'm going to throw it back to you. We can take questions if we have time or we can not if we don't. Perfect, Rich. Thanks. Uh, one, one question just to wrap up uh, from uh, bigger perspective, maybe you could just in one minute or less address the idea of, you know, balancing out a marketing campaign with do you direct mail, do you do internet, do you all the different options, what's your counsel there? Yeah, good point on that. Uh, let's look at this. If there's two things, one called now buyers and one called future buyers, and if this last part of this discussion has been geared towards, hey, let's nurture these future buyers, here's what we've got to understand. When you're online, when people are searching the internet, those are, by definition, those are now buyers. Also, Yellow Pages, I'm not saying Yellow Pages is or isn't or should or shouldn't be part of your marketing mix. I'm just saying people that are in the Yellow Pages or online searching for dentists, they're now buyers. So we've got to focus more in those efforts on telling them why our dentist is better than other dentists. But we've got to mix it up. We need to be very diligent in our now buyer solicitation by being online, pay-per-click, search engine optimization, a lot of things that Greg's doing and his company and also yellow pages, but we also, I think we're missing a massive opportunity if we don't take this type of marketing that we're talking about, well-articulated, powerfully stated marketing, and integrate it into an ongoing campaign. And again, Steve, this is exactly what we've done for your uh, six practices here is we just keep hitting the mail, and we just keep hitting it, and we keep hitting it, and we keep hitting it. So it's not an either or. If you do either or, you're setting yourself up for missing something. If you do both, then that's the way to run a marketing campaign, to put your money out there, to hit the now buyers, to get the future buyers nurtured, to start hitting them over time, but also you better crank up your pay-per-click and your search engine optimization. Your website better do its job or you're going to be missing uh, a significant amount of patience. Perfect. Rich, thanks for uh, sharing the wisdom behind your, your strategy. I appreciate the education because I think that really gives uh, a lot of context to the ideas so everybody can understand what works hey, no problem. and what doesn't and, and what goes behind it. Thanks for joining us today for our uh, webinar again. If you'd like to go back and, and re-listen, we'll post that on the email network as soon as it is available at crowncouncil.tv. Have a super afternoon. Thanks again for joining us. We'll talk to you all soon.